last, Hiccup has returned, wearing mighty dragon scale armor. And I would like to introduce my friend, Astrid. Hi, everybody. It's good to be back. Wow, you're looking ferocious. Now for my next friend, Snow Loud. Thank you. Thank you. I'm amped for battle. Uh, uh, Snowlout, is this your dragon scale armor? Dragon scale armor? My mistake. I thought you said squirrel tail armor. Alright, I'll go change. On the table, is it really finally here? DreamWorks, how to train your dragon the hidden world. What? It was delayed another year? Ugh. Oh well, see you next year! And it's DreamWorks How to Train Your Dragon the Hidden World! Wow, it has been forever since we've looked at dragon stuff. Tell me about it! I had to get a second job! Oh, poor Hiccup. So we have four hidden world dragons to look at today, mostly the main cast, plus a new villain. We have to, of course, start off with Hiccup and Toothless. Again, it's been forever, so I'm probably super rusty. Toothless is a cat who dresses up as a dragon, right? Right? Did I get that? Oh boy, it's gonna be one of these days. So here we have Hiccup and Toothless. This would be a basic assortment pack found at Walmart. They run about $15 a piece. In my day, a How to Drain Your Dragon toy would run about $10. And we'd have enough money for a tour train across town and a burger for a nickel. But since How to Drain Your Dragon 3 was delayed all the way till 2019, things have gotten a little more expensive. Now initially looking at these guys, I felt more like Dragon Riders series. Their scale is pretty small, but the figures look more like your typical How to Train Your Dragon normal figure. Not that Spin Master ever really made that many figures. But that's kind of the scale of things. They're not as big as they used to be in this size of box. I think How to Train Your Dragon 2 called them Power Dragons. That sounds familiar. All right, it's coming back! Oh man! The box design on these hidden world toys though, incredible. There's something about the blue and the green and the way the red How to Train Your Dragon just pops out. Probably the best package design I've seen from Dragon stuff. On the back of the box, an epic image of Hiccup and Toothless standing on a ridge of the hidden world. I see crystals, I see floaty things, I see watery things. This basic assortment series is really featuring up the dragon scale armor, which on Hiccup seems about normal, but looking at Astrid and Snotlout looks pretty fantastic. Now I just need to figure out how to remember to open this open box pack. If you need help, I have a lot of sharp wings at my disposal. Usually it's just one quick snip and they're out. Take that on shelf store security. And we have Hiccup and Toothless outside of package. Oh no. Oh wait, I got them mixed up. It has been a while. Out of the pack, these two look pretty good actually. Toothless feeling a little bit larger than I first thought. And Hiccup in that dragon armor. Looks pretty cool. Now something new with the series so far is the dragons are going to shoot projectiles. That is something I don't believe we saw much with older series. Let's give it a shot. It took me a while to figure out. What you're going to have to do is insert the blue dart into Toothless's mouth and pull back the back legs to fire. As always with Spin Master, probably about 3 to 5 inches of firing range. The good thing that dart doesn't always have to be installed. So giving Toothless a spin, looking pretty good from all angles mostly. He's in a good attack stance, but also just kind of a good standy stance. It looks like his flight harness is painted quite elaborately. It's pretty much all over his back and saddled down his tail. But it looks like we're missing the patented toothless red dragon skull tail feature fix. Uh, so that's kind of a bummer not to see unless that has been repaired somewhere in the many episodes of things that I have not really kept up on. As for articulation, looks like we have wings on pins that can flap up and down. Looks like there's good range on those and they kind of hold at various different positions. Then for the legs, the front legs kind of move around just a little bit, but because he's in such a crazy attack stance, there's really no reason 
to place him in any other position. You'll notice we can get some talking or some toothless action laughing <coughs> by moving the back feet front and backwards. So overall for a basic toothless figure, pretty good. I was secretly kind of hoping that someone else besides Spin Master would get the Dragon's Line this time just so that we would see something entirely different. We've seen many versions of this scale of Toothless before, and it's nothing really entirely new, but it could fall on the better side of Toothless figures made. As for Hiccup, this would be an attempt at a realistic action figure look of what is that 3 inch scale? I think most people will be pleased he is not in the official Dragon Riders form which was more of a younger, younger audience feel, so it's good they stuck with a more movie-authentic look. <laughs> As for articulation of the figure, looks like we have shoulders to rotate, just around in circles, head rotation, and the typical hips, which are usually made so that they can ride the dragon. Like so. Although, it looks like he's going to be pretty loose up there. I don't really see a good post to hold him in. The saddle is kind of made so that you can kind of fit the legs under it a little bit maybe, but not entirely, and I don't really have a good grip for his hand. So he's holding in pretty loosely, but I think you might still be able to do this awesome maneuver. The backwards underside toothless hiccup barrel roll of over the table missed death. So that's impressive, you can still hold on somehow. Now he just won't let go. Ah, sorry, sorry. I don't know if the back is officially made for doing that, but it just did that. I think that's just kind of random. And no, unfortunately, Hiccup's mask does not get removed. Let's move on to Astrid and Stormfly. Astrid and Stormfly on the table, great package design again. On the back of the box, another epic image, although I think I'm sensing some cutting and pasting of the figures onto the background. Let's quickly remove these two and see what they look closer up out of the pack. Out of the pack with Astrid and Stormfly. Pretty good combo of the two. I like how the dragon scale armor really matches the look of the dragon. They're both with that bright turquoise and yellow and brown. Really a good combo team. Although looking at the scale, Stormfly feels a little bit small. I think they could have even produced this figure a little bit larger. Come on. However, at this scale, she should be able to eat a Lego chicken pretty well. There's a good Stormfly. Stormfly, like Toothless, has a projectile firing weapon. Place into mouth and fire away for practice. Back legs pull back, I imagine. There we go. That one actually fired about two to three feet. I guess it all depends on the spring mechanism loaded with each dragon. This might actually be one of the best looking Stormfly figures. She's just a little small. Astrid's armor looking good. She's a little tricky to stand holding that axe. She kind of likes to fall over. Articulation, I believe, pretty much the same with hiccup, head rotation, shoulder rotation, and hips, but they're going to be a little bit tighter because of her skirt. So watch out there. As for riding, she does okay sitting up on top of Stormfly, and somehow once again she's holding on. I think by getting her foot underneath some of Stormfly's head spines, she's going to be able to hold on and do the, uh, whoa, well, almost. Maybe push her forward a little bit more. Mm. It's going to be a tricky fit getting her to hold on tight. This is a pretty good looking toy set, although I don't know if it matches the $15 price very well. Stormfly just unfortunately feels small. I guess we'll just see how they scale up to Snotlout and Hookfang. There they are, and Snoutlout easily has the best dragon scale armor. What did he do, rip a dragon's head off as a mask? I don't think Hiccup would approve that. On the back of the box, an epic image of the two cut and pasted onto the same background. And let's remove from package. Out of the pack with these two, Hookfang is really hugging the table tight. At least larger than Stormfly, but still feels a little small the way he's flattened down on the table. And again, Snotlout's dragon armor. 
If that's not comical, I don't know what is. Look at the eyes, they're just silly. Even with a dragon scale wing cape, it's the full getup. So like the first two dragons, we have our projectile. Let's test that out. Install, probably pull back wings again. Oh, I completely missed him. Hook Fang is painted really well. Look at those wings. We have a nice gradient of bright red orange going to a deeper dark red brown with a lot of brown spotty scaly detailing going throughout. Also Hook Fang's back a dark brown red. Hook Fang's main body being red orange with a yellow underside. Also a little detailing with Snot Lout's saddle and a little strap going around Hook Fang. So detail pretty good with these so far, much better than some series. As for getting Snot Lout on top, let's give it a try here. Same articulation mostly. And they sure like to drop their weapons. Once again, we're kind of trying to fit the figure onto the saddle or seat, trying to get their legs under something. I've got them under Hook Fang's horns. And I think he'll hold on pretty well. Always like the Dairy Queen Blizzard test. Oh, oh that's gotta hurt. Fits a little bit better than Astrid did, but he's still a little bit topsy-turvy heavy up there, especially because Hook Fang again is pretty small scaled to Snot Lout. So Snot Lout and Hook Fang I think turned out pretty well. Again, a little bit of issuing with scale, but for basic assortment figures, pretty cool. Now let's check out the big, big bad guy. They would be Grimmel and Death Gripper. So a Death Gripper dragon, I think that's new on the table. On the back of the box, where have we seen that scene before? With Death Gripper and Grimmel standing before us. Dragon scale armor, I don't know, I think he's just kind of cool armor, big belt buckle. Let's get them out of pack. And there they are outside of the box. Now I know next to nothing about these two, Death Gripper looking very creepy. Very dragon slash insect like. <clears throat> Death Gripper with two very long tusks, would you call those, coming out from the underside jaw. Kind of a small head with yellow eyes. Someone Triceratopian. I kind of see some grippy like praying mantis hands. Must be why they call it Death Gripper. And the back tail kind of feels scorpion like. A black dragon with red gradients going down its wings, and a red underbelly side. And pretty good size of toy, not really scaled again to Grimmel, but with the wingspan, takes up a lot of table space. And I did just find underneath where they stand in the package, we have instructions on how these work, and these instructions might be the coolest thing I've ever seen from Spin Master. They're so basic. I like how Death Gripper is in purple, and then look at the others here. There's Toothless, and Hook Fang, and Stormfly. I'm gonna have to keep these. Nice unintentional bio cards. Grimmel here. Wasn't he in Hotel Transylvania? Kind of feels like they didn't get the best design on him yet. Maybe he looks better in the movie. Again, what's with that belt buckle? That feels very 90s. Not sure if I'm too scared of him yet. Oh, the projectile. I almost forgot. I'm getting backwards on this. How is that even going to fit in there? All right. Just kind of fits right in between the tusks and pull back legs or arms. Oh wait, don't pull back legs, push head down. Oh, I missed. Smart not to hit the big bad guy. Looks like Grimmel has a small crossbow-like weapon, and I don't believe he's gonna ride Death Gripper. I don't see the ability to. He's got this long cape-like thing, so he's probably just kind of one of those bad guys who just stands around and does bad things. And there we have our first look at DreamWorks' How to Train Your Dragon, The Hidden World, basic assortment of figures and dragons. Together they mesh well as a collection. I'm eager to see how they play out on screen and give Hiccup a much needed break from his winter job. You know, I'm actually getting pretty good at it. Oh no! DreamWorks' How to Train Your Dragon, The Hidden World, basic assortment of toys from Spin Master, arrive on store shelves January 2019. They run approximately $15 a piece. If you're big into refiring up your dragon's collection, now is the final conclusion to do so. 
With an epic assortment of dragons and dragon scale armor figures, this collection will be one to look for. Unless you are afraid of projectiles that may gracefully scatter down the table. That's what I have to say about that. I think Squirrel Tail Armor would be superior. Thank you for watching Squirrel Stampede. Please, like, share, subscribe.